name is Glenn Killane and I'm uh, Managing Director of uh, RT Television. been in the industry, the television industry, as a producer, director, editor, journalistic type for, uh, since 1996. So uh, it's been, a, it's been a, a progression to, to the Managing Director role. Um, my responsibilities in RT are to do with all things regarding television, from the, the business side to operations and um, the management of our studios and our post-production to uh, output such as programming and sport and acquisitions uh, right, right across the, the board and strategy for, for television and television programming. On the one hand it's incredibly healthy. Uh, viewing figures are through the roof. The amount of people or the amount of time people are watching television is, has never been greater. Um, the pro quality of the programming being produced out of Ireland, you just have to look at shows like Love Hate, shows like Raw, shows like The Voice, bringing in big, big numbers, all produced in Ireland. Uh, but on the other hand, I think we're in a, in a bit of a, a state of chassis, if you like, in terms of the funding of broadcasting and the funding of program making um, on a number of different levels. I think the economic collapse has been obviously devastating for the advertising world and all broadcasters in this territory are heavily reliant on, on advertising funding and that's a real challenge for us all. Um, so, so it's good on the content side, it's good on in terms of the, 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 the future proofing of the industry, people are really, really engaged with TV, uh, but in terms of trying to fund the indigenous broadcast sector in this territory, it's, it's quite challenging at the moment. From my perspective, it all boils down to the content. Uh, regardless of what platform it's on. So in terms of the growth, if the, if the industry is to, to continue to thrive or to, to kick on from this current kind of trough that it's in, we must continue to produce quality programming, Irish-made programming. Irish, the Irish public have shown and demonstrated consistently that they want to watch Irish-made programming that's relevant to them, regardless of the age group we're talking about or the social class. So it's absolutely essential that the Irish public get what they want, which is Irish-made programming. That is not serviced via the UK. That's only serviced via Ireland. And that's TV3, RTE, TG Carher, Satanta, channels that are based here, that are solely uh, dedicated to the Irish audience. And that's the only way that's going to kick on. One of the big, big issues for us is measurement of audiences across different platforms. Uh, if we can't join up the data between online viewing and linear TV and Vosdal, we're done for because ultimately it's great that people can consume our content on different platforms in different ways and, and have more flexibility and more choice. But if you can't measure it, you can't sell it. And we need to sell it. And so do TV3 and so do other channels in this territory. So that's a big challenge. Uh, and nobody's cracked it yet in other markets in the UK or the US. And they'd be uh, far further down the road than we are. So that's a big, big challenge. At the moment, we're in this kind of cluster of problems uh, for broadcasters. Revenues are down, we need to continue to produce programs, and yet the need has never been greater to invest in new technologies such as high definition, such as 3D, you know, uh, you know, file server technologies and stuff, you know, we're hugely important. We're moving away from tape. RT will be tapeless by the end of this year. Um, so, so, you know, there's a huge drive on technology and it's changing so rapidly. Um, but, you know, the dissemination of content on different platforms uh, is a fantastic thing and it's not a challenge. It's not something that I see as something that's negative. It's, it's a great thing because people, more people will get to see our content. But if we can't measure it, it's not worth anything to us. Uh, we need to be able to say to advertisers, X amount of people watch that show that you sponsored. They watched it on linear, they watched it online, they watched clips on YouTube, they, you know, they, 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 they liked it on Facebook, all of this kind of stuff. So if we can't do that, we're, we're, we're not going to make any progress in this world and we can't monetize it properly. And I think you know, the digital monetization needs to catch up with the linear monetization in terms of the linear television experience as well. There's a range of other challenges, uh, there's lots of them, but do you know what, I'm actually very, very hopeful. I think. You know, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of great talent out there. There's a lot of great program makers. There's a lot of you know fantastic ideas, uh, very skilled program makers. And I think you know if we can continue that kind of conveyor belt of great talent, you know, there's great hope for this for this for this sector.
digital is key, you know, and um, you know, from, from RTE's perspective, we're very much looking at a tri-media organisation. We're looking at structuring ourselves in a way that facilitates tri-media you know, dissemination of, of content on a tri-media basis. So, certainly in television, it's now a no-brainer that everything has to have a digital back end or some sort of digital, digital angle to it. So if you're commissioning a comedy series like The Republic of Telly, you want to be, you want to be clipping that, making it accessible to 15 to 34-year-olds on mobile at source so that it's not an afterthought, that it's part of the, the production process. What I've noticed in terms of um, advertising and, and audience viewership is that something like social media can be incredibly positive about creating a live experience, uh, creating an event. You know, we, we noticed that with MasterChef in its first series, we put a lot of emphasis on social media um, and we got that foodie community who were interested in it to show up at 9.30 on RT2 twice a week because they wanted to engage with one another at that time. It wasn't a live show, so instead of recording it and putting it on the on your on your PVR, you want to show up live because you want to engage with that community that you're part of. In 2013, if we could if we could just Sit, have a, a period of stability in the market where uh, nothing much happens, where there's no great fluctuations, where there's no highs and no lows, that we, we can all have a little bit of a vision of uh, you know, planning ahead ever so slightly, that we can kind of see where the country's going for a short period of time, that we can put in foundations for the future, we can actually say, you know, we've got our competitives, co competitiveness uh, at a level we're really happy with, we're an attractive company, a country to to invest in, and that I think if we can do that and put in the foundations this year, it can it can build a, a much brighter future for the country. But probably not till 14, 15, 16. You know, 13 is a key year. If we can just kind of get through the year in a calm and orderly fashion, uh, that would be a major achievement. I think.